Hey everyone, Wiggles here. Werewind's meat is stunning, but that beauty comes at a cost. If you're dealing with stuttering, frame drops during combat, or just want that buttery smooth 60 or 120 frames per second, you clicked on the right video. Today, we aren't just lowering everything to potato mode, we're doing a comprehensive dive into the best PC settings to maximize performance while keeping the game looking sharp. We'll cover a couple things you can do outside of the game, every critical in-game setting, and finally, how to monitor your own system to see if you have the headroom to turn the graphics up. If you're watching this and you also play on your phone, check on the card right at the top of this video right now or in the description of this video for my mobile optimization guide, which is already helping a ton of players. But right now, let's fix your PC performance. So before we get started, we need to make sure that your PC isn't fighting itself the whole time. These are three really fast universal tweaks that will help almost every game. First, your drivers. I cannot stress this enough, but Werewind's Meet is a new title, so updating your NVIDIA or your AMD driver is essential to do. New games often get specific game-ready driver optimizations that yield massive frame per second gains. For this, I highly suggest you get the NVIDIA app and just go into that because there's a really easy way for you to like just completely update all your drivers. So when you're in here, go to the driver settings here, so it's this drivers tab, and you just press the download button right here. Make sure you're in the game ready driver because the studio version is completely different. So just do the download for this. It will probably ask you to restart your computer and hopefully it doesn't for this video. But that's step number one. So make sure that this is fully installed and probably do a full restart on your computer just to make sure that this is working. Next up, search your windows and look for game mode. So go into your game mode settings and make sure that game mode is turned on. When you do this, it pretty much will just optimize your PC for the game that you're running. Finally, search on your computer one last time and look for choose a power plant. Make sure that you're going towards something like high performance, or in my case, I have ultimate performance. Pretty much, you just want to make sure that you're not on power saver or balanced. Now that's pretty much the three main outside things you could do to really improve performance, but now let's get into the in-game settings. So open up your menu and then go to the settings on the right over here. In here, there's a couple different things we can do. So let's head to the display tab. And for display mode, it's way better for your PC's performance to go into full screen. So maybe you're in windowed, but having it in full screen will make sure that all the available resources in your computer will go towards this game. And that will especially be happening if you have your PC in game mode. For resolution, stick to your monitor's native resolution. So either like a 1080p or a 1440p. If you're not sure, you can go to display settings and you're able to find the exact monitor here by going down all the way till you get to advanced display and it'll tell you exactly what your monitor is. Next, it does really help to turn VSync off to reduce any kind of input lag. If you do get terrible screen tearing, cap your frame rate using the in-game limiter. So you can find it right here. And for me, I'm gonna limit it to 120. If this does cause issues, you can go back to enable, but in general, is it better to manually do this yourself? And you are also able to do this in the NVIDIA control panel too. It is also better to put motion blur onto close as well. This feature just blurs the image during camera turns and cost performance. Turn it off for a clearer picture. This is just the little stuff. Now let's tackle the settings that actually kill your frames per second. So the biggest thing you can do to improve your performance is looking at the super resolution mode. You're gonna wanna change this to DLSS if you have an NVIDIA card and pretty much FSR if you have anything else. There's other options very specific to Intel, but this could also apply to you too. In my case, I'll select DLSS. Now it's really important to know, if you go into this list and you don't have anything to select in here, it's because you're not running the game in DirectX 12. In order to run it in DX12, you want to be pressing the play button, but when you press this, you want to go down to where wins meet and then DirectX 12 right here. So this is just for Steam, and if you're watching this and you're playing on like Epic Games or something like that, let me know in the comments if there isn't an easy way for you to get to DirectX 12, and I'll definitely tell you exactly what you need to do to fix that. So from here, you get some more options too. Because I'm streaming this right now, I don't want any kind of issues. So I have this on ultra performance, but for this video, I'll show you exactly what to do. So first let's set this to quality. If for whatever reason, when you start playing and this is really difficult, you can always just slowly put this up and up. Quality will give you the crisp image that almost looks native, but runs much faster. If you are struggling for frames, drop it to balanced. 
just try to avoid ultra performance because it definitely makes the game a little bit too blurry. Next, you see NVIDIA Reflex. Just press enable here. This reduces the delay between your mouse click and the sword swing. It costs you zero performance and makes your combat feel much snappier. Nvidia's frame generation actually really matters on the type of card you have. In general, if you have anything better than the RTX 4000 series, then press enable on this. This pretty much creates one extra fake frame for every real frame you get, effectively doubling your frames per second with minimal latency. Doing 3 or 4x is a bit much to be honest, and I'd only suggest this if you have a 240Hz monitor. Feel free to try it, but be warned, the higher multipliers can introduce a bit of input lag. So for most people, 2x is the sweet spot. If you turn this on and you're like, holy crap, this is way too much, just set it as close and just don't even worry about it. Since we have frame generation enabled, we have massive performance headroom. And even if you're not using frame generation, this will still apply for you. So you can see right now, my visuals are pretty much in potato mode. I put it to performance, low, 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 low. Again, this is because I'm streaming and recording at the same time. But for this video, I'm going to show you the way to make this look the best and not bog down all your resources. So first off, get it off all these like presets here and put it into custom. And if you are all about performance, you could just leave all of this on low like this and the game still actually looks really great. I was really surprised when I did this and I went back in the game and it just looked like everything was the same as before. But to really get the most out of this visual quality in the game, because it does look amazing, is by first changing ambient occlusion from low to high. This adds essential shading in corners and makes the world look rounded instead of flat. With DLSS on, this also is super cheap to run. The next one is tessellation. This adds depth to flat textures like cobblestones, but it's barely noticeable when you're in motion, so save the frames here. I suggest you put this on low, but if you can handle it after this video, you could always try turning it up. Next is vegetation quality, and I highly suggest not keeping this one on low. Low will remove too much grass and makes the world just look bald. Medium is the perfect balance for all the immersion in the game. Same with tessellation, you could always try to turn this up, but only do that at the end of this video after you've monitored all your stuff. Next one you see here is lighting quality, and I'd highly suggest setting this one to medium. This really helps the world kind of like glow more and water to shimmer more, but the high settings here are often unoptimized for ray tracing features that cost way too much. Medium will look 90% as good for half the cost. So let's set this to medium. Next is view distance, and keeping this on low causes objects to pop in too close to your face, while high will really kill your CPU. So just try to stick this to medium if you can. The next one's effect quality. This affects all the different kinds of effects in the game, but the good news is that low actually doesn't reduce any of the effects you see, and this is purely a visual type thing. So if you really, really want to get a better visual experience, you could try turning this up to medium, but I personally like to keep this down to low just so my frame rate doesn't dip at all. But same thing, you're not gonna be missing out on any kind of animations or effects. So I really like to keep this on low just to save those extra resources. Second last in this list you can see is reflection quality. Not only does this show like glimmers on edges of paint and stuff like that, but it'll also improve like the water quality. Pairing this up with the lighting quality is really the best way to do it. So I'm gonna just change mine to medium as well. And lastly is real-time sunlight. Now, even on some high-end rigs, this dynamic feature can cause stuttering. I highly suggest you just keep this off for consistency. But like I said, if you are somebody that really, really likes the visual aspect of this game and you do notice that your computer isn't bogged down at all, just try to turn this back on and see what happens. I would say, out of all the different visual features in this, this is probably the least tested one because it is a dynamic type setting. Alright, so in general, this is probably the best type of settings you could be using on your PC right now if your device can handle it. And there's a couple ways to check if your device actually can. So the first would be to check your monitor and just make sure that the memory on this monitor is completely fine. But in my case, this looks great. Okay, so we've targeted the game that looks great but still runs really fast. Now let's see if your specific PC is really happy with these new settings. So while playing this game, press Control shift escape Doing that will bring up the task manager, and where you want to go is in performance. Most importantly, this is going to be showing you the CPU, the memory, and the GPU. There's going to be three different things that could be happening when you do this. Either you're going to see the sweet spot where your GPU is at 99%, and when you play the game, your game's going to feel smooth, and that means that you're perfect. You'd be getting the best possible graphics that your computer could handle. 
So if you are like 90 to 99%, then you're perfect and you don't have to touch anything else. Obviously, if that's also happening, but your CPU is at 100, then that means that there's gonna be some other work to do as well. So the next scenario would be you start stuttering. Everything feels stuttery or your frames are dropping really low, below 60, but don't panic. There's a lot of things you can do. You don't need to lower everything right away. Just try dropping your view distance and your vegetation back to low. Those two things are gonna be bogging down your device more than anything. And lowering those back down to low will usually fix the problem instantly. And then the last scenario is if you're like me and your GPU is only sitting at like 50% like this, pretty much pinning you to the max frames you can get and your GPU is barely doing any work because of that frame gen. So let's go back and crank the lighting and reflections up to high. You have the power, so you might as well enjoy it. One thing to note though is my CPU is definitely lagging compared to my GPU. What this means is that certain settings will be really difficult for my computer, whereas some others will be really easy for my computer. The main things that really affect CPU is things like view distance, vegetation, and crowd density, because these will be like generating new things as you start walking around in the game. But for the graphics side of things, the GPU, I'm able to turn back on things like the ambient occlusion, lighting quality, reflection quality, and any kind of like volumetric type stuff. Since my GPU has the free space, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So, same thing, go back to your settings and display. Now I'm gonna change the things like the lighting quality. So reflection quality for me is gonna be going to ultra. And then the last volumetric thing you could change is real time sunlight. So I'm gonna set this to enable. If you do have the power for this, I do actually like this one but it can weigh down most PCs, so I really just didn't suggest it at the very start. So if I was really confident in my CPU, I would start turning things up like the effect quality or even the view distance. But because the CPU is my current bottleneck in my rig, I'm gonna leave effect quality down to low still. Cause it is one thing to monitor the performance when your character is standing still, but the performance will start changing once you're in some really intensive fights. So for that, I highly suggest you keep Task Manager up if you have two different monitors and perfect, just put it onto the other monitor and watch while you're playing. To really test your performance while you're playing this game, you're gonna have to do some kind of group content. So maybe like a sword trial or the hero's challenge, something where there's gonna be another player with you and there's gonna be an enemy attacking at the same time. Sometimes it's hard to like alt tab if you're by yourself. So doing it with a group can really help. And lastly, like I mentioned, if you are struggling and you're starting to get some stuttering after all these settings change, you don't have to go all the way back to low. I highly suggest just turning down those two things. So changing vegetation and view distance to low can really help you. Overall, doing optimizations on your PC is a balance. By using the DX12 and frame gen, we basically unlock free performance that lets us turn the graphics up without slowing down the game. We all have our preferences too. Some people want the best quality possible, whereas some others want the best performance possible. And the best news is for you, they have those presets, so you could always just change it to that if you really want to. I really hope all these tips helped you out though. Things like the outside of game performance stuff can really help you if you haven't done that yet. And just knowing how to monitor and see what kind of settings are affecting what should probably really help you if you had no idea about this kind of stuff. The community in this game is fantastic, so if you are having any kind of issues, feel free to drop your specs in the comments of this video and either I or somebody else will help you out. I want to know if anybody else is seeing that 50% usage, but more importantly, if somebody's struggling, we're definitely here to help you out. Now, as always, don't forget to give this video a like as it really helps this video grow. Also, I make so many useful guides in this game, so I highly suggest you subscribe and stay tuned for all the stuff that's going to be coming up. Any kind of like and sub goes a really long way and I really appreciate any kind of support. Thanks for watching this video, everyone. Have a great day. Cheers.